Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I got plenty of show for you guys for your morning of Friday, the 14th of July. In July and this month, that's in pretty much the middle of the summer. Uh, so we have a lot of show. I got some events, I got some news. Uh, interesting things happen in the news, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, we got some city council where they're talking about some of the ambassador program in the university neighborhood relations in the university district, essentially. Um, I got art clips. I got a new summer series episode called Train Wrap. So you guys get to enjoy a nice little train wrap uh, um, made and produced by uh, one of our uh, Saturday, our, our Friday, our let me start again. Uh, we have a summer series, a train wrap, uh, uh, featuring the kid from our animation camp week this week. So we'll be uh, premiering that tonight as well. So tonight at 5 p.m., all the kids will be showing all their wonderful videos for you guys to enjoy. So we have, so far, we have over 16 videos, and today we're going to find out how many more videos we're going to have and show for your enjoyment tonight at 5 p.m. for the live final show. Um, in case you missed any of our live cut-ins, we're going to basically be showing everything the kids have done this week. So let's kick it off with a little bit of weather tonight. Today it's going to be a really, really, really hot day uh, with highs into the 97. It's already 63 degrees outside. I walked outside. I was like, wow, this is warm. I can't imagine what it's going to be like later today. Well, now you don't really have to because it's going to be as high as 97. It's going to be really hot. Um, um, tonight, the lows are going to be 61. Saturday, your high is still going to be around um, 96, but then you're going to drop and have a little bit of a cool down for your Sunday and Monday, kind of like what we did last week, but a little earlier for your Sunday. So your high will be 88 degrees. Your low will be 44, so there's going to be a 40-degree difference, 40-degree drop for your Sunday night. So if you guys are planning on going out and about, be aware that they'll have that nice little drop for you guys for any kind of uh, weather as well. So it's kind of like one of those things where you're like out camping and whatnot and it gets a little colder than usual and you're like, oh, great. Um, <laughs> I need to be more prepared. Anyways, um, let's talk about some of the news article, uh, articles that are happening. Um, July 22nd is the Flathead Cherry Festival up in Polson, um, but right now they're uh, talking about some of the yield that a lot of the cherries are um, providing this year. Uh, they're two week we're two weekends away from the annual Flathead Cherry Festival in downtown Polson, but many of you can get a start getting cherries as soon as this weekend. As this year, many cherries have grown, um, but of course, on a side note, um, some fresh huckleberries um, just last week during the farmer's market, but many of the smaller fruits will be pouring in. Um, I've, I've already seen a whole bunch of strawberries. Um, my my parents garden has strawberries it's just all over the place a lot of small berries apples of course will be later on this year as well it, during usually it's during the fall seasons and stuff like that so we will have cherries to kind of uh, get us to there as well but they're going to have uh, a lot of things happening on the 22nd of July with um, pie eating contest cherry pie eating contest sp specifically so you have a bunch of uh, cherries happening on here uh, of course here's a little history note that I got from the Missoulian the first cherry tree was introduced in Montana in 1866 by um, 1893, growers have discovered that the Flathead Valley had the best climate for growing sweet cherries. The state's first train car load of Lambert cherries left the area's original packaging uh, plant in Kalispell in 1932. So um, that's something to definitely look forward to uh, come upcoming as well. But uh, Wednesday, there was a committee for uh, Indian health care plan. Um, um, John Tester... Uh, blasted uh, w one of the uh, representatives. Uh, so John Tesser spoke about health care and was displeased about the American Indians were not being cared for. Um, and here is a clip of he is blasting IHS director's refusal to answer a basic question. I have a clip from there. Hold on one second. So I don't think... All right, so let me just get it queued up. Sorry about that. Okay, here it is. I'm on your side, okay? I'm a former chairman of the Indian Affairs Committee, former ranking member. I've been on this committee now for eight years. Just tell me if it's an increase or a decrease. It's that simple. Well, sir, I'm looking at our, our line items, uh, our, our priority has been to ensure that we can continue to provide direct health care services. And uh, those funds have been uh, prioritized and, and maintained uh, at the levels that we uh, can ensure that we don't have to decrease the level of service. 
And that's your answer? That's my answer, yes, sir. Wow. Um, I'm not even going to go into... I'm not even going to go into facilities. I'm not going to go into what's going on with mental health. I'm not going to go into going on with the problem with drugs. I will tell you that with the previous IHS staff, um, I remember giving a speech similar to what the chairman did, and that is if you guys don't advocate for a budget, how the hell are we supposed to fix it? Um, I have never had in 10 years on this committee, I have never had somebody come up here and when I ask them a direct question, they don't answer it. I asked you a direct question on whether this budget was up or down and you would not answer it. You refused to answer it. That is totally unacceptable. I did not come in here with my hair on fire, but I'm leaving here with it. And I'm going to tell you something. Indian Health Ser Service is in a crisis. And if you have served in Indian Health Service for 10 years and you have answered the questions in Indian Health Service like you have here today, it's no wonder that it's in crisis. I cannot believe what has transpired in this hearing today. All I want is some damn answers. That's it. And if we can't get answers from Indian Health, where do we go to get those answers? I don't expect you to answer that either. All right, so that was John Tester uh, blasting the director. Um, let's see. Tester uh, specifically asked, uh, uh, Wakey se seven times in the president's uh, proposed budget increased or decreased the funding for health care, workforce recruitment, and retention at Indian Health Service facilities, a priority for both Tester and Wiki. Um, Wiki refused to answer Tester's questions, as you just saw. So um, this is one of the um, many things that are being um, kind of glossed over with this current health care um, budget that's being in and out of the House and Senate. Uh, right now it's in the Senate, um, known as the Better Health Care Plan, and a lot of um, uh, other things are going on there as well. Health care is a huge issue that's going on in and around the nation, and a lot of people are very um, disheartened by uh, the way things are going right now. And that's kind of like one of the things that um, uh, I guess that's in a way uh, the, the way of saying it is like it's the straw that broke the camel's back. But I'm going to end it right there. And that's the kind of things that are happening in and around uh, the United States and Missoula. So uh, without further ado, here are some of the new programs that are happening on MCAT. And when I get back, I'll talk everything about um, movies that are coming out this weekend. say that because they fight the poor to go to wars. And that's one of the truest lines I've ever heard. 
even as a recruiter, I never recruited out of good communities. I wouldn't recruit out of a community like this. I would recruit like down on the north side. That's where recruiters go. When I was when I was in New York, I recruited out of the inner cities of Brooklyn. And that's where I went, and that's where my little list told me to go. The world has got to change, and we know that changing it in Montana, because I'm from California, <laughs> and I don't say, you know, usually say, you know, that's a terrible thing, but <laughs> I'm proud to have been, been born and raised in California. But changing things in Montana first makes a big difference in this country, especially in small communities. It, it I mean, it, it's amazing how many people's eyes are on us. And, you know, I just, you know, thank you all for being here and listening to what we have to say. Um, so, well, before I kind of, I wanted to switch gears a little bit, but if anybody wanted to add anything else before I do. My, and I, I would just like to say that my hope is that you will spread this message even to Republicans and that, um, I, I, since this is televised, I hope that um, people at home watching will, will listen to what it is we're saying. Um, uh, about when uh, Belt at Wayroot is a very big and great uh, question. I can not answer, but I answer uh, in a short uh, uh, we know uh, the spirit of one belt at one road. We must know what the spirit. The spirit of one belt at one road is a spirit of silk road. Spirit of silk road is peaceful spirit. That's the spirit of one belt at one road. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're going to do a little thing called pre-critic, and I'm going to start um, pre-judging movies before I even care. Anyways, well, it's a movie that takes place before those crazy astronauts set foot on the planet of the apes. So get your, hand, get your dirty hands off me, you darn movie execs, because this movie is what you get from the title, War for the Planet of the Apes, um, starring Woody Harrelson as insert human scum here and follows along with a story that follows a bunch of naked hairy folks as they conquer the world via plague time warfare because let's face it um, there are only so many actual apes on the planet that have a, a vast resource to overthrow the human race in the first place seven billion versus I don't know maybe a million apes but then again you know it's just a movie I don't want to get into the details of this it's a movie about like well it's it's quite obvious how it ends because it's like kind of like a prelude to the planet of the apes so anyways that's kind of what the movie is i mean i don't want to spoil it but you know it's been spoiled since the 70s or 60s i don't even remember um moving on uh wish upon uh remember uh wishmaster one through infinity and origins and all that stuff basically um there's a whole this is technically the same thing every movie that has everything that says there's a horror movie and then there's wishing involved it's always about be careful what you wish for and this is definitely what one of those movies so um i don't know really how to describe this it's just like basically what it's another movie that tells you be careful what you wish for comes wish upon it's starring a girl who finds something that gives her wishes but wait wow 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 with every wish scary things seems to happen until she either dies or people die uh, from it and she's just like oh crap I better not do wishes um, so this movie basically is a horror movie about with wishing elements in it you know it's been done um, moving on um, from the personal tale of how a Pakistani comedian falls in love with a girl who is sick comes the big sick basically a docudrama about what I just said that that's basically it it's um, I don't know really how to describe this movie. It's 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 but uh, watch as you see a heartwarming tale. Um, their their words, not mine. Discover that you can find love even if they are sick and could die. I don't know, guys. <laughs> This is basically a good date movie because, you know, if you take your girlfriend there and you kind of shows this like through sickness and in health, that's kind of like kind of showing this is like, I'll be here even if you're sick and that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of what this movie's about. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it kind of goes the old tropes, but I don't I don't know. Like I, it's it's really just kind of like based on a true story. So you really can't be mean about it without sounding like a jerk. But then again, it's a movie. 
And then uh, on the other aspect of it, you got to understand that maybe the person who's writing about this made this movie um, and is profiting off of his girlfriend getting sick, um, now wife. I don't know. It's it's just something to think about <laughs> before you see this movie. But um, that's pretty much it for pre-critic. There's some of the new movies that are coming out this week. There always there's like three or four new movies that come out every single weekend. It's kind of ridiculous. You get oversaturated, and it's ridiculous. So I'm just basically kind of spoiled the movies for you because it's not it's not anything special. It's just a movie. It's whatever. Um, but I have a brand new summer series video uh, featuring one of the kids, um, PJ who did a stop animation with Thomas the Train and Smudger as he cre made me correct because I was like Smolder, sm sm Smolder, Smolder, and Scully, sm Smolder, X-Files um, and he was just like no Smudger, it's Smudger and so uh, we made uh, a rap about uh, Thomas the Train versus Smudger in an epic rap battle so without further ado here is that and when we come back we'll have some um, city council for you guys <laughs> Thomas here, the OG train. Time to stay at beats. You be able to see my sleep. Gonna make the old train stop in the track. This isn't to me. Soup Tom is back. Smudger is here, and I dispute. I may as well hit you with some diesel. Dropping these beats like bombs on the weasel. Soup Tom ain't got nothing on me. These the beats you drop are just lazy. You think you're good, but you're just the one-up. Seeing you rap wants to make me scoff. I've been rapping before I even thought of. I'm Thomas the Train. You got no brain, so get ready for the pain! been here from the start, but you still pump out diesel like an old fart. I've been pulling these carts since the beginning. Watching you rap will be the ending! All right, moving on. Uh, so here is some of the things that are happening with your city council. Uh, so I got this from the committee of the whole meeting. And uh, basically, the Missoula City uh, Council supports the UM ambassador program through their city um, budget. Um, given there is a new director for the program, Jordan Lyons, um, UM students live throughout the city, and it seems reasonable that the ambassador program provide outreach to citizens regardless of where they live in the city. So Jordan Lyons with ASUM um, kind of kicks things off of, about what, how he's excited about this program and working with them. Um, the university enhances uh, Missoula's culture and quality of life. So there, you know, I've got a little photo there of a dance performance on campus, and I don't know if you know, but the university even has a football team these days, um, they're, and they're actually pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, just a little reminder there. Um, but, you know, with that said, realistically, there, there are impacts of the University of Montana, right? Um, the neighbors experience impacts, and so those are, um, those include noise, especially at night, um, you know, parties or conversations at night. Um, speeding and traffic in communities. Um, Gwen just mentioned to me um, that there's, it sounds like there's some maybe some drag racing or passing or something going on in the university district and that's something I very much look forward to hearing more about. So um, <laughs> I hope you'll uh, introduce me to the person who con contacted you about that. All right, so um, um, Jordan Lyons is working with uh, connecting uh, students with um, neighborhoods and um, helping figuring out ways to make it easier to uh, work with students. So Jordan Line is getting started and he seems excited as you saw, but it's pretty easy uh, to work with students affairs when there are no students. It is the summer after all. Um, but then of course, you know, I'm not counting summer students, you know, just a quick little correction because, you know, there's people who take summer classes and whatnot like that. But, you know, of course, the big bulk of the huge population boom happens in the fall semester. So Jordan Lyons, he talks about the ambassador program um, 
a little bit more in this ambassador program. And so these are um, a team of one, one group leader and about seven to ten students who work part-time as neighborhood ambassadors and other volunteers, including other student groups. Um, and they do a lot of different activities to improve quality of life around um, the university district and the community. And so some of the things that we do in this program are welcome bags for student renters about being good neighbors. So that's where we actually give a welcome bag to a homeowner and then they give it to their neighbor who's a student renter. And it's got all kinds of information about their rights and responsibilities as, as uh, renters. We also do neighborhood canvases in response to complaints. So we do send um, people to do outreach um, to mediate a complaint. We've had trainings in the past from, um, from the Community Dispute Resolution Center and NCBI or Empower Montana. Uh, we also do the contribute to the Sunday sweepers cleanups after football games. Um, we all know people have a great time at the football games, but you know if you're as you're leaving, you probably see if you take a walk through the neighborhood, there are cans and cups and and other garbage. And um, this is a great program where students come through um, and pick up pick up some of that garbage. So you can see that um, photo in the top right there. All right, so um, I have my next quote, and this is from um, Marilyn Marler. Uh, but before that, uh, Jordan Lyons has come onto this uh, morning show to talk about Missoula Aging Services and helping the, the golden oldies, as I call them. Uh, students can get all sorts of free stuff when they move into rental homes near campus, or they don't even have to meet near campus, according to um, what I saw in this meeting. If they connect with the ASU program, they're entitled to uh, getting free snow shovels, maybe a couple of gears here and there. Maybe they can work out a deal to find out a way where they can maybe uh, acquire a lawnmower and whatnot, so they can upkeep their lawn and whatnot. Because if you you're living in a neighborhood um, with homes and stuff like that and there's some rental properties some of the times the value of your homes go down so that's kind of like the same thing that they want to keep um, prevent from happening in these general areas as well. Marilyn Marler she talks about the city's $10,000 contribution a year for this program and how it's helped um, the city of Missoula and neighborhoods. That's and I would like to comment that since we started that since um, Ingstrom and Zach Brown and Mayor Engen signed that agreement and the ambassador program got going and we cost shared it. Um, I feel like we hear a lot fewer complaints about conflicts. So problems are solvable. All right. So that was Marilyn Marler. Um, up next, we got a, a quote from Jordan Hess. Um, and his, this is his response to the ambassador program. I've had the opportunity to, I've known Jordan for the better part of a decade in other capacities, I guess, and I'm really excited to, to have him at the university. Um, but the Neighborhood Ambassador Program is relies very heavily on student labor, which is, um, first of all, is the cheapest um, labor force that you will find. It's the most enthusiastic labor force you'll ever find, and it's a great, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful um, learning opportunity, and, and um, I think um, we couldn't spend this ten thousand dollars in any better way all right so that was uh jordan lyons uh, i mean not jordan lyons that was uh jordan hess um talking about that um of course newsletters are available for who anybody who is interested in getting in touch with am asum students housing programs and ambassadors who can help with potentially noisy neighbors and also uh it's a great resource for people to use as well because they're always um helping um um some of the younger generation to see if they can work on cleaning up some um, areas on campus as well and always looking for maybe even helping you out your neighborhood it, which includes like clean up your neighborhood maybe doing some um, trimming of some bushes and stuff like that so if you can you can get in contact with them through the ASUM program at the University of Montana um, I'm pretty sure you can look that up but other than that you can uh, find them on Facebook uh, you can look that up at ASUM programs the, um, yeah and there's also so many things that are possible through this ambassador program. It's a, it's a way of connecting the UM students to um, neighbors as well. So um, 
that's pretty much it I um, in terms of city council. I have an art clip for you guys. Um, I've been showing the same art clip. Uh, there hasn't been any uh, major new thing. There's been a lot of new art installations right now, but a lot of the uh, the art clips aren't ready for you for uh, for you guys quite yet. So here is an old art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. And when I come back, I'm gonna talk about all the events that are happening because there is a lot of events happening this weekend. So I'm gonna try to get through it as quickly as possible so you can guys can kick off your weekend right. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, there is a livestock um, thing happening. Oh, let me just actually get to my notes. But um, there is an event happening in the Western Montana Fair grounds. Um, they have a livestock open class. So an open class livestock e exhibit entries for the Western Montana Fair are due today. Um, you can enter anytime between um, now and 5 p.m. No late entries will be accepted. Payment must be made in time of entry. So if you are uh, presenting an animal or um, you have your kid who's doing it, uh, the FFA program, that kind of thing, um, and also 4-H, all sorts of mini programs. I, I don't know if I'm watching that. But anyways, if your kid has an animal that wants to be in the, this live, um, the livestock, any kind of competition like, like that, today is the day where the deadline ends before the Western Montana um, Fair begins in August. Um, it's pretty much the first week in August. You can't miss it. Um, employment Assistance Program is happening at the Job Service in Missoula Palmer Pathways. If you're seeking employment or having trouble uh, um, landing a job, the Job Service Missoula Program can help out. The Education Pays and Subsidies Employment Programs help you land a career job. You can call them at 329-1275 or stop by the office at 2677 Palmer Street, um, Suite 222 and they're open daily Monday through Friday during the work uh, work hours um, 8 to 5. Um, then again, once again, the number is 329-1275. Um, Tiny Tales is happening at the Missoula Public Library. Um, this is for birth to three years of age. Um, they usually do this in the large mini room where they tell stories to kids and according to them, kids, uh, toddlers learn nine new words a day. So this is a great way to get them involved with the Missoula Public Library. This is always free for families and uh, you know th they just ask that you be accompanied by an adult or a guardian or caretaker to be with the kid at all times. So eye dissection is happening at the Spectrum Discovery Center at 11 a.m. Um, this is also another great way for kids to get engaged with science. Um, the Spectrum Discovery Center is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. You can please join them at their new location at 812 Tool Avenue. It's 350 for anyone four and over. If you're under three, you get in free. Discovery Bench eye dissection is their topic for today. Uh, you have Liquid Planet Blood Drive. So if you're interested in donating blood, they're looking specifically for Oh, because that's a universal donor, and why not? So, O, oh, um, then otherwise, um, they're always looking for any kind of blood type. You don't need to be specific one thing or another. Um, it's starting at noon today at Liquid Planet, and it goes until 5 o'clock in their blood mobile. You can't miss it. It's right in front of Liquid Planet all day today. Um, and also happening tonight and this early evening is the Jungle Book. No, not the movie. J the Jungle Book is being performed by the MCT, Missoula Children's Theater. They had their camp this week where they learn a play in one week, and they perform it for their friends and their families at 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock tonight. 
Um, so it's going to be great. Um, I've been to a couple of these once in a while because um, some of my family, because some of my friends who have kids have had this. Um, a lot of times the little, little kids usually are just kind of dressed up in costume and they just kind of kind of move them around as a group. Some of the older kids get a little better parts. It's usually about the, the uh, it's usually about the most, uh, the leadership. It's all about the leadership. If you want your kid to be like the actor, they have to be cool, collective, and ready to go at a moment's notice. That's always what I notice. Um, there's the Montana Greek Festival, uh, Athens under the big sky at 5 p.m. Um, so starting with the Greek Festival, it's pretty much going to go on all weekend long. They're kicking off at 5 p.m. at the Greek Orthodox Church. If you like Greek food, um, please, uh, the Montana Greek Festival will return this f for its fourth year this July, so basically today, and not only will they have your favorite Greek uh, delights to entice your palates, but they'll have a full day of family fun and activities. They'll also be working with bringing more and better entertainment with the featured performance, dancer lessons, and if things are align right, live music. On the site, they have Greek food vendors, uh, t Taverna with a wine and beer, Agora, it's a Greek market, um, Greek music, dancing, and bouncy house f and children activities, and much more. Um, and it's happening um, Friday from 5 to p 5 to 10 p.m., and it's happening tomorrow from 11 to 10 p.m., so all day, Saturday, or today, in, in the early and to late evening. So happening also is a hallway gathering opening at the Zootown Arts Community Center. This is the one thing I'm highlighting because Zootown Arts um, Community Center is doing a whole bunch of things happening today. Uh, but this is one of the things to entice people to go there and see all sorts of things that are happening. Camp Days is also happening there. So in the basement, they have music performances with a bands from all over the place. But tonight, I'm going to talk about the, you can join Zach in welcoming a fresh round of artwork to the hallway gallery space. This new collection of work will be dis on display in the Zach hallways all of, wait, all of July, I hope, because it says June in here, which is weird because I, I got the information today. Um, if you cannot attend the gallery opening, um, you, you can go during business hours, and they're open from Monday through Friday from 11 to 6 p.m. Uh, Worldwide Cinema presents at the uh, Missoula Public Library. Enjoy a recent foreign film uh, during our Worldwide Cinema series, um, which features a film screening of the in the large meeting room. The July's film is My King, and it's from France, and it starts at 7 p.m. So that's kind of like what's happening for your Friday. Let's kick things off with your Saturday. But, of course, I keep on forgetting. I keep on kind of mulling over some of the late-night events for any of you um, um, night owls. Um, there's a monetary pop at the Roxy. It's going to be a rock and film. Um, you got Montana's Finest Hip Hop Showcase Volume 3. I don't know what happened to Volume 1 and 2, but it's happening at Monk's. It's going to be a hip-hop show at 8 p.m. Dead Hipsters presents I Love the 90s Dance Party at 9 p.m. Tiny Plastic Stars Album Release Party at the Top Hat Lounge, 10 p.m which wraps up your Friday night. Saturday morning, if you guys want to stay out too late, you can enjoy some farmer's market shenanigans from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, People's Market, Farmer's Market, and the Clark Fork Grover Market under the Higgins Bridge. Uh, there's the 32nd Annual Alberton Railroad Day Festival, Days Festival. Um, so starting at 8 a.m., Alberton, Montana, pretty much all day and all weekend long. Um, you can enjoy live music at Sportsman J Bar, Tracks Bar, Alberton, Montana, and the River Ed Steakhouse. Friday will end with the running of the Bulls at Sportsman's at midnight. Saturday, uh, from 8 a.m. to pretty much all day, uh, they're going to have pancake breakfast at, the, at their senior center. Their flag raising um, and carnival games begin at 10 a.m., followed by a parade. So nice, you can see it twice, which they will do the parade twice, apparently. A talent show and a car show that will take place after the parade, and tons of games and activities will be available afterwards. So um, that's happening in Elberton, Montana, starting today, but also Saturday is the big weekend thing. Um, another thing that's happening is Dig Missoula Volleyball. For Missoula Regional Park is doing a, a, fan, a full a fulfilled day of volleyball at the Dig Missoula Family Volleyball Open. Um, men's, women's, and juniors division, grass fours, uh, rec fund division, competition division, and open division. It's $100 for a uh, team of four, and you can see the website for details at Missoula Parks and Rec. There's the second annual Montana Bicycle Celebration Bike Ride. Ride the Bitterroot Trail in beautiful western Montana. You can do that anytime just mind you, but this is a thing where a bunch of people can come together and ride to Stevensville from Missoula or Hamilton on Saturday, um, July 15th, starting at 9 a.m. You can swim in the Stevensville pool and enjoy vendors and delicious food at the farmer's market and attend the Bike and Brew Fest music 
at, by local musicians right back the same day or camp in Stevensville and return on Sunday the 16th. There'll be a luggage shuttle to transport camping gear and baggage is available for an, an additional fee. And uh, another thing that's happening is the uh, Rocky, Mountain Elf Elk da Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is doing a kids event at the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And this is happening from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday. And you can try out the new Pin the Antler on the Elk and more. Um, Rock the Hood um, annual North Side West Side block party. Zootown Arts Community Center, like I said, is doing a whole bunch this weekend. Starting at 3 p.m. They're doing a block party. Uh, this year, their kickoff at 3 p.m. with events, activities for children and adults include live silk screening, printing on T-shirts, face painting, puppet uh, making booths, bingo, um, Christmas in July booths, complete with a visit from Santa. Um, you got arm wrestling. I don't know if you can arm wrestle Santa, but you have live music, food, and drink vendors, and more. There's so much going on. Getting winded. Uh, then, of course, we'll end the uh, events with uh, basic photography in Missoula. Rocky Mountain um, School of Photography it says goodbye to the days of pressing your camera's shutter button while also crossing your fingers and get ready to capture the sights and uh, moments around you with confidence. Blue sky days, hiking in Glacier, no problem. P poorly lit um, conference room photos in your, at your business website, not a problem. And all sorts of little events, that, uh, little problems you may have with your camera, they'll solve it. And it's basic photography starting at 7 p.m. at the Rocky Mountain School of Photography. Uh, here are some of your uh, night events that are happening. The Loose String Band is happening at Draft Works. Live music with Travis Yost at Ten Spoon Winery. Uh, John Floridas is happening at Imagination Brewing Company. He's an acoustic musician. He's a great musician. I love him. Um, the Marcus King Band is at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be a blues jam band. You got Monetary Pop at the Roxy. At 8 p.m., Salsa 406 is at the Dark Horse Bar, absolutely with Chris Moon and the Badlander Karaoke at VFW. So a whole bunch of things happening this and around the weekend. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything happening on Sunday, but I'll just kind of skim through Sunday just for you guys. And this is where you can get information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. All these events and more, you can go to your specific day of event if you guys are traveling in and around the area and are going to be out of town this weekend because it's a great time to get out of town and get on the river. It's going to be really hot today, but let's go on down to uh, your Sunday. So let's see, 5th Annual Windermere Sup Cup is going to be at Best Reed Park, which is just under the Higgins Bridge. Um, you got Sunday brunch at Jeffrey's Brewery. Intro into permaculture design, natural building, and design at the Missoula Urban De Demonstration Project. So MUD, Missoula's Urban Demonstration Project, always does a, a wonderful, great things happening there. We, we've we uh, filmed a couple of their um, education workshops as well. Um, so yeah, these are some of those events that you can see and more uh, by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. I don't have much else to talk about today. Um, weather is looking pretty hot this weekend. Sunday, you can expect your highs to be 88 degrees. Um, your low is going to be 41 degree on Sunday night, so it's going to dip down pretty cool. So that would be the perfect day to open up your windows and get some of the cool air inside your house and maybe get some good sleep without tossing and turning from all the heat. So I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank <laughs> you.